I'm Chris. Welcome to my basement gym for fitness yoga. Hopefully you've got a mat, a block, and a strap. If you don't, don't worry. Just grab a towel. You can grab some pillows. You can also grab some books for some elevation if we need something firm. Anything will work, so don't worry if you don't have everything that you need. There's nothing required. There's no right, no wrong, just different. I say that a lot. Let's go ahead and find the center of our mats. What I'd like for us to do is start off in a nice, calm, centered mentality and also just being physically centered. So let's find our feet in the center of our mats. Feet underneath our hips, or if you choose tr the traditional big toes touching with the heels separated outside edges of our feet parallel to one another. Again, no right, no wrong. Embracing being different. Let our body weight sway gently forward and gently back. It's just a shift of our body weight, coming heavier into the ball of each foot and then heavier into our heels. Just gently switching back and forth and then slowly just settle more into the heel and stay right here. We can lift up our toes, but our weight is about 60% heels, 40% is our toes. And then gently shifting our weight heavier to our right side and then heavy into our left. And then settling to where we feel our weight is equal in both legs. Just finding our center, getting that plumb line set up. Good. Now, can we push our big toes down and pick up all our other toes? Fan them out. Just let them settle down into the mat. Okay? Found our balance. Let's come into mountain pose. We're just gently lifting the arches of our feet up. Rotating our thigh bones open. And that takes our tailbone underneath us a little bit more. It also makes our stomach muscles become a little bit more active. Gently hugging those muscles into our spine. Let's lift our sternum up towards our nose just a little bit, allowing our shoulders to roll back and down. And then gently hug a big fat kindergarten pencil right between the shoulder blades, widening our collarbones. Good. Let's bring our chin back over our sternum, ears over our shoulders and not out in front. Just imagine we have a string running through the crown of our head, through our spine, down through the tailbone, and it's just lifting us up, lengthening our spine, lengthening our body. We grow maybe an inch or two. And now if you like now, close your eyes. If that doesn't feel good, feel free to keep your eyes open. If your balance is a little off, Feel free to have a chair close by so you can rest your hand on the back of the chair or even sneak over to a wall and let that wall be your aid so you may allow your eyes to close. Let's focus on our breathing. Let's inhale. Make the belly and the ribs expand front, back, side to side. And exhale, letting the chest fall, ribs fall, stomach relax. Inhale, and exhale. Let that breath get a little longer, a little deeper. With each exhalation, let 
any external thoughts, any stressors, anything that's driving you nuts today, let it escape. Give it permission. Give yourself permission to push it aside. It will be there later. Don't worry about it. It will be there. Let's take care of ourselves at this time. Remember, we cannot take care of the things and the people around us until we take good care of ourselves. Let that breath help calm you, center you, make you more self-aware, If you'd like, you can open your eyes. We'll bring our hands to heart center. Hands coming through the middle, elbows close together as much and as long as we can. See mine go far apart right away. That's okay. With two rotator cuff surgeries, my shoulders are a bit tight. Inhale through the middle. Exhale as we open up. Just imagine we want to reach the ceiling. And exhale as we reach our fingertips to the walls, lengthening our arms, lengthening the collarbones, broadening our reach. Good. Two more times. Inhale. And exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Bringing those hands to heart center as we reverse. We're going to sweep up. Open up our hearts to the ceiling. And draw in. Inhale. And exhale. Two more times. One last time. Good. Inhaling, both arms lift. Let's drop our right arm as we exhale, reaching the arms in opposite direction. Just doing half moon. Inhale, lift. Exhale, half moon. Inhale, lift. And exhale, floating both arms down through the middle. And let's repeat. Inhale, exhale, half moon. Inhaling as we lift, exhale. Inhale, exhale, floating down through the middle one more time. Dropping the right arm and lifting. Dropping our left arm and lift. Both arms floating down and coming to heart center. Sitting back in chair pose, arms low, palms facing forward, squeezing the shoulder blades together, sweep up, open up through the chest, pushing the hips forward, tucking our tailbone under. A bit of the chest expansion, sweep back, squeeze the shoulder blades together, low chair, scoop up. Open the chest up, pull the ribs down, and scoop back. And scoop up. Again, tailbone tucks under. Make this from the rib cage up. Open up the chest one more time. Sweep back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. And scoop. Good. Forward fold. Arms wide. Hands come to our shins, and let's bend our knees generously, rounding up one vertebrae at a time. So we do this again. Inhale, lift. Exhale, forward fold, hinging at the hips, pushing our hips back. Hands come to the tops of our shins, and round up one vertebrae at a time. Last one. Forward fold. Pushing our hips back, hands just come to the tops of our shins, 
and around us. Let's look over our right shoulder and our left and our right and our left and chin to chest, making our ears our pivot point and lift and drop and lift one more. Let's level out our chin and pouring water out of our right ear. Let's sweep the right arm up. Let the weight of the hand rest on the side of your cheek as we reach our left arm out to where the wall and the floor would meet. Breathing into the tension. Good. Lift our hand and turn your gaze downward slightly and let the hand come back. Lifting our hand, release, and changing sides. Let's pour water out of our left ear. Sweeping, lifting our left arm up, letting it rest on the side of our face. Hand reaches out to where the wall and the floor would meet. Again, I'm not pulling on my head, it's just the weight of my hand. Let's lift our hand for a second. And turn the gaze slightly towards the floor and place the hand back. Good, inhaling and exhale, removing the hand first and then lifting our head. Good, let's let the back of the palms touch, round out through the chest and palms up and open the chest one more time. And over and open. Good. Let's lace our fingertips behind our back. If you have trouble lacing your fingertips behind your back, feel free to grab your towel or your strap and let that be your aid. We want to think about not letting the ribs flare to be able to do this. So we want to stitch the ribs towards the hip, pull the belly in, tailbone underneath, so we feel this wonderful stretch through the upper part of our chest. Breathe. If you can, you can walk your arms in, elbow to elbow. Me, it's enough to squeeze my hands together. Everyone is different. Maybe with the strap, you can work your hands a little bit closer together. Breathing through the tension, nothing should be strained. If we ever find ourselves today labored in our breathing, please feel free to just soften the pose and allow the breath to become easier. It's not a competition. Good. Let's release, shake it out, grabbing our blocks, or if you need, grabbing a book just something to have an elevation for the hands to come to with forward fold. Feel free to face the side. We'll place our block down at the top edge of our mat. Inhale. And exhale, hinging at our hip joint. Try not to make it a rounding just yet, so hinge at the hip joint. When you get so far, you can allow yourself to drape over, coming to your block. Our block can be here, it could be here, it could be here. Let the breath go to the tension, hugging our thigh muscles to the bone, but letting everything from our waist up be totally relaxed. Exhale, forward fold. Let's inhale, reversing that fold, coming to a slight extension. Remember, it's rib cage up. Open up the chest to the sky and draw down to heart center. Let's so do this again. Inhale, lift. Exhale, forward fold. 
using the backs of our legs, pulling ourselves up halfway, and releasing to the block. Inhaling as we reverse, and drop through the middle. Again, lift, forward fold. Press through the floor, use the backs of the legs to come halfway up to flat back, and exhaling as we fold. Inhale, reverse, lift up, open up the chest. Oh, I didn't bring my hands to the middle, sorry. One more time, adding in. Forward fold. Squeezing the backs of our legs, pushing our feet through the floor, lifting. And exhaling as we fold. Coming to the block, we're going to step back with the leg closest to each other. Coming into a nice low lunge. Crescent pose, inhale. As we exhale, press through, lift up, pushing the hips forward and lifting the chest, opening up. Let's pull the bottom rib towards the hips. Crescent pose. Good. Exhale, crescent pose. Just inhale, hands returning to the block. And as we exhale to press up into forward fold. Inhaling as we reverse our fold. And draw to center. Same thing, other side. Inhale, lift. Exhaling as we fold. Using the backs of our legs, push through the floor, lift halfway, monkey. And forward fold. The leg furthest from each other. Let's step back into a lunge, preparing for crescent. Squeezing, lifting up, pushing the hips forward, shortening the distance between the ribs, but lifting our chest up and open to the ceiling. Breathe. Exhale, crescent. Inhale, we're coming to back to our block or the floor and stepping into our forward fold as we exhale. Inhale, reverse that fold and hands drop through. Let's do this one more time. Inhale, exhale, fold. Make this flowing this time. We know what we're doing. We feel good about it. Use your breath. No pauses. Let's flow through. Into forward fold. And reverse lift up. Squeeze those thigh muscles to the bone. And one more time. Forward fold. Halfway up. Forward fold into our crescent. Breathe. Hands to heart center. Good. Let's go into a forward fold. Using our forward fold to bring us down to the floor. As we come into quadruped. Again, remembering that if we have a hardwood floor or a cement basement floor, we need to make a wrinkle that will give the knee some padding. It can also help if you have carpal tunnel issues to make a wrinkle to elevate your wrist so that way you're not coming into a strong flexion here. It's a little softer, a little bit easier. So please. Mind what works for you, okay? So coming into our quadruped, let's do a little cat-cow, warm up that spine. So exhale in the cat, pushing the mat away. 
and inhaling in the count. Sometimes I really take my time. Today, I want to use our breath. Feel free, you don't need to go slow and really articulate the spine. Just want us to feel the movement. Breathe, exhale, push, round. Get big and round. And inhale. Pull the chest through. And cat. A quick flow between cat and cow. One more time. using our blocks for our extended child pose. Just a deep stretch for the chest, for the back. We're gonna slide that block in. And again, if you don't have a block, try a pillow or a book. And we're going to extend back into extended child pose, letting the forearms rest on the block, keeping our elbows straight but not locked. Separate the knees slightly. Allow the chest to sink through the shoulders, deepening the stretch for our chest and our back. We should feel a wonderful stretch right under the armpit where our back attaches into our upper arm and our chest attaches into our upper arm. If this feels good, we would like to change the sensation Bring the knees a little closer in. Let the arms cover up the ears, sinking the chest. Try not to dive with your forehead. Keep your head lifted, making your neck in line with your spine. Let the breath go through the back, feeling a wonderful stretch through our mid-back. Soften those elbows. As we bring our elbows down, we'll put our block off to the side. Extending our arms out. Go ahead and come up onto the knife edge and make a fist. And let's push the fist together. Bring in the elbows down. The elbows are underneath our shoulders. Knees are underneath our hips. Press through the elbows. Pull the chest. So chin is over fist. And now pushing away. And let the chest sink. Use those muscles underneath our armpits or our shoulder or our chest in our back. Attach right underneath our armpit. Use those muscles to pull forward. And back. It's a modified dolphin. A swimming dolphin. Just introducing the movement. We shall do it later fully. Just stretching out the chest and the back with the extension here. And introducing a little work as we use those muscles to pull us forward. Let's stay back in our extended child pose. Good. Inhale, prepare to cat curl the hands and knees. And exhale, cat curl up. Let's put our hands out. Drawing forward into a low plank. Now with our low plank, we don't want to sink. We want to pull those belly muscles up. Shorten the distance between our hips and our ribs. Make this active. Our shoulders are not up by our ears, but pull the shoulder blades down into our back pocket, pushing the mat away. 
Let's dig our toes in as we come into Downward Facing Dog. Press the hips back. The weight of our body should be in our hips. We shouldn't be loading up in our shoulders. If we feel like we're loading in our shoulders, bending the knees generously will help because it can be tight hamstring. It can be a tight low back that prevents you from being able to shift your weight into your hips and your heels. From here, let's walk in place. Bend one knee and straighten the other. And the same thing. Let the tension go with each exhalation. Breathing into our downward facing dog. Settle into our downward facing dog, coming up onto the balls of the feet. And now pull the knees in and push the knees away, dropping our heels. Pull the knees in and pushing the heels away. One more time. Pull the knees in and pushing them away. And this time let's bring the knees down and pressing back into extended child pose. Separating the knees if you'd like to allow you to sink your chest and allow room for that belly to drop between the knees. Exhale, extended child pose. Inhaling as we cat curl forward. Into low plank and lowering down, preparing for a half cobra. We scoot down so I'm more in the frame because I know I get cut off at the edge of my mat here. Let's let the tops of our feet rest on the floor. Let's pull our belly button away from the floor, allowing the fronts of our thighs to be heavy in the floor. As we exhale, use the upper back muscles to pull the chest, lifting it away from the floor. Try not to use the arms. Try not to use that low back. It is all about that mid and upper back, squeezing, shortening the vertebrae of our spine and lifting our chest off the floor. Exhale, half cobra. Good. Let's release. Pressing back into extended child pose briefly. And cat curl forward. And lowering down. Half cobra. Exhale. Inhale. And exhaling as we lower. Pressing back, pulling our hips back into extended child pose and cat curl up to low plank and lowering down half cobra good pressing back into extended child pose preparing for downward facing dog toes dig in and pressing the hips up, pulling ourselves forward, knees, no knees, draw forward as we lower down, let's extend the arms out for a sphinx as we press and extend up, let's pull our belly buttons in, don't, don't collapse and pinch the low back. Pull the belly button away from the floor. Open up the chest. Squeeze the glutes. Lowering down. Hands under the shoulders for downward facing dog. So we lift, shoot the hips back. Drop the chest through the shoulders. And draw forward to plank. 
shifting forward as we lower down. Arms extend past the crown of our head, pressing back, open the chest sphinx, squeeze the gluteals, pull the belly button hard into the spine, keeping our low back long and lowering. One more time, pressing back into downward facing dog, sinking the chest through the shoulders, bring the shoulder blades together, come forward to plank, weight shifts forward as we lower. One more time in our sphinx, hands come up, press back. Pull the belly button in, pushing the fronts of our thighs into the floor. Breathe. Slow it down. Placing one arm on top of the other. And let's let our cheek rest on our forearm. Giving those arms a little bit of a break. Keep our head center. I'm going to have to scoot. We're going to be doing locust. We're going to be swinging our arms. And I can see my poor owl will probably get bumped. Coming down, let's prepare for locust. Remember with locust, we don't want to relax our bellies. We don't want to let our low back become a cow curve. We want to lengthen our low back. So we're going to tuck the tailbone forward, pressing the fronts of our hips and our thighs into the floor, pulling our belly button away from the floor. Feel free to let the forehead rest down and our hands come by our sides. I just want to make sure I can talk and articulate this so you understand. So please, Feel free to rest your head down. The hands will be by our sides, palms facing the ceiling. As we inhale to prepare, pull that belly button firmly away from the mat. As we exhale, use the mid and upper back to lift the chest away from the floor, fingertips reaching towards our heels, squeezing the muscles between the shoulder blades. Think of all the muscles from where your heart rate monitor strap would be upwards. Breathe into the low back. Let the low back be long and lengthened. Our belly is strong. From here, bring the arms up to the letter T. And then extend overhead. Back to the letter T and down by our sides. Let's return to the mat and feel free to stack your arms one on top of the other, turning the other cheek and letting your cheek rest on your forearm, giving ourselves just three breaths to regroup and come back and do this again. Again, let's bring our foreheads to the floor. Again, I will be just angled towards you so that way my voice carries. So please rest your forehead down. Arms come down by our sides. Let's inhale. The belly button raises away from the floor, pushing our tailbone forward into the mat. And as we exhale, we use our mid and upper back muscles to Pull, lift, open our chest forward. Fingertips reaching towards our heels. Good. Now, if you'd like to add to the sensation, you may extend using your gluteals and the back sides of your legs, not the low back. Floating the knees up from the ground. Again, arms may come to airplane. To Superman. 
back to airplane and to our sides. Let's lower the legs and return the upper body down. And one more time. Stacking our forearms, taking a brief rest. Let's do this one more time, but with no arm movements. We'll focus on upper and lower body, making sure our lower back is long, our bellies are engaged, and we're using our glutes and our upper back to help execute this locust. Arms by our sides, forehead on the floor. Inhale as we pull the belly button away, and exhale as we use the upper back Holding our chest up and open. Exhale. Inhale. And as we exhale, using the gluteals, floating the knees up from the mat. Breathe. Let your breath raise and lower the body. Inhale, and exhaling as we lower down. Stacking our forearms and resting our forehead or the side of our cheek on our arms. Let's bring our hands underneath our shoulders, pressing ourselves back into diamond. Coming into a low Hindu squat. Coming onto our heels or onto the balls of our feet. If your balance is a little off, feel free to stagger your feet to lift. Shoulders over hips, over heels, bracing our core as we float up. And lower our heels. Let's come to the center of the mat. I'm going to grab a quick sip. Feel free to grab a sip at any time. With every breath, with every exhalation, we do release water vapor. We can become a little dehydrated. Let's find ourselves in the center of our mat again. Finding that center line, finding that center balance as we prepare for triangle pose. Let's bring our hands to heart center, hopping or stepping our feet apart, three to three and a half feet, turning our right toes out fully, left toes in slightly, and bringing our arms out to letter T. Let's start by pushing the left hip up, dropping our right hip down. Allowing the right hand to come to the inside of the thigh. And the left arm extends to the ceiling. Our shoulders are stacked one over the other. Our spine is straight. We're not rounding over. We are strong. Good. Breathing into our triangle pose. Let's bring a bend into our right knee. Can we sink our hip down just a little bit? And now pressing straight, deepening our triangle pose. Breathe. Let's bring a bend into the knee one more time. We can slide down just a little bit more on the inside of our shin. And then pressing straight. Beautiful. Let's raise our right arm up, left arm frames. We lift up out of triangle and rotate fully to our right, lifting up our left heel, modifying our warrior three. 
as we bring a bend into our right knee, arms sweep up. Our leg and back is straight. Try not to let the knee be soft. Push. Use your gluteals. Use the backs of your legs. Be strong. Think of pushing this hip forward. Warrior two. Let's press and extend up and rotate slowly towards me. Let's bring a bend back to the knee into triangle and now taking the bend out. One more time. Breathe. Spread those fingertips apart. Feel the collarbones get wider. Drop this hip. Legs are strong. Inhale, triangle pose. And exhale as we press through both legs to lift and release the arms. Let's change sides. Left feet turn out fully. Right foot turns in slightly. Again, our heel is lined up the instep of our foot. Arms come to a letter T. So we reach out. Remember, push the right hip out and up, dropping our left hip down. And then we just bring the hand to the inside of our thigh, and the right hand overhead. Again, we're reaching in opposite directions. Again, remember, our spine isn't rounded. Nice, straight, long line. Breathe. Now let's bring a little movement into our triangle pose as we bend our left knee slightly. Not letting the knee cave in. Knee presses out to the pinky toe. And then pressing the straight. Good. One more time. Let's bend the left knee. Deepening our triangle pose. Sliding the hand down the inside of our shin and then pressing to straight. Breathe. Let's extend our left arm out. Our right arm comes to frame as we press through the legs to lift up, coming into warrior two, or warrior three, excuse me. Rotate slowly. Balance can be a little off, but heel is lifted. Now bringing a bend into our left leg. Remember our right leg is straight. Keep that glute strong. Keep the back of our leg strong. This hip is being pushed forward. Breathe. Your balance is a little wonky like mine is. I'm toe healing my foot out. So that way I have a little bit wider stance. Sometimes we just need to do that. Let's slowly come back to facing front. As we come into triangle one more time, bent leg. And now taking that bend out. Breathe. Feel free to let the gaze go upwards. And now pressing through both legs, lifting out of our triangle and releasing our arms. Let's turn our toes forward, toe heel in. Do you feel comfortable? Step the legs in, shake it out. That was a challenging series. Let's work on our balance just a little bit. So we prepare for a modified dancer's pose. Let's shift our weight into our right foot. Let's grow that right foot through the floor. Let's just melt. Spread out like pancake batter. Good broad base. Now hugging our thigh muscles to the bone. Giving our gluteals a squeeze, our belly button a squeeze. Lift up nice and long. And just let the left foot float up from the floor. Good. Bring the left foot slowly behind us. And can we reach and grab our ankle? 
If you have trouble grabbing your ankle, feel free to grab your strap. Just take the whole thing and wrap it around. This may be a great place to stay for you. Turn your arm out to a half T. If this is great, stay here if you want. Let's bring the right arm forward. Now push the left foot into the hand, hinging at our hip joint on our right leg. Extend the right arm out, pushing my left foot into my left hand. Great. Dancers pose. Let's slowly come out. Arm floats down. Means we change sides. Again, there's progressions. Find what one fits you. And it's okay to stay there. Let's see in. Weight shifts. Left foot spreads out. Becomes rooted. Left leg becomes strong, muscles hugging the bone. Belly hugs in. And right foot floats up. Let's extend the right leg behind, grabbing our ankle, using the strap if you need to. Let's bring the arm out to a half T. Maybe this is perfect for you. If you'd like a change, Arm comes front, narrowing our balance point. Pressing that right foot into the hand, hinging at our hip joint. Extend out. Dancer's pose. Breathe. It's okay if you sway. Muscles are reacting. Squeeze. Inhale, dancer's pose. And lift it out. And coming to the floor. Good job, good job. Let's grab our blocks. We're going to come to the floor. We're going to work on our hips. Again, if you don't have a block, a pillow for this one would work better than a book. So what I'm going to do Place the block on the mat. I want to rest my heels on the block. Kind of an aided calf raise, heel raise. We're going to come down into a Hindu squat. Just lower the hips to the heels. on our balance, working on a little bit of a stretch, knees, glutes, low back, ankles. If this works for you, wonderful. If you need a different sensation, feel free to remove the block, but separate the feet. If you feel like you're going to fall backwards, Prop the block under your tailbone and have a seat on the block. Let the hands come together. Elbows gently pressing open the knees. If this is a great place for you, wonderful. If you can, you may remove the block. And then the feet can come together. For me today, I'm a little tight. So actually, this block right here is absolutely awesome. I'm allowing my knees to be wedged open with my elbows, feeling a wonderful stretch on the inside of my thighs. Let's come off of our blocks. Sometimes it could be a little bit of a challenge. Woohoo! And I'm just going to tuck the leg under and have a sit. 
Smooth head blocks off to the side. We've done this before. I do love it. I hope you like it as well. It is a little Z-sit. Our feet comfortably wide. We're going to roll the knees over towards our right. One hand on the outside of our right hip. The other hand comes inside. So it's like a 90 degree angle. And then we're going to switch. Back to center. And let the knees fall to the left. 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle. I know sometimes you can lift your hands. If you can do this, my next sensation would be to use gluteos to rotate and lift the ankle up off the ground. I'm staying with just this. And rotate. On this side, I can't lift because I'm going to fall over. That's because this leg is tight and it's pushing too hard into the ground, making my upper body fall over. So being supported is just fine. Changing sides one more time. And if you notice on this side, I can lift. That's because this knee isn't pushing into the ground, making me tip over. Coming back to center. And we're just going to sit back and extend the legs out comfortable distance apart. That way our toes aren't falling in. Try not to lift and yank them out too far where you have to have your knees bent. Just a nice comfortable sit. Grabbing our straps. Let's place that strap around the ball of our right foot. Letting the back of our left leg be active into the floor. Let's rotate, squaring our chest up towards our right big toe. As we inhale to prepare, and as we exhale, this is a hinge at the hip joint. So please don't run just yet. Stay lifted. Keep it down here as we reach forward towards that big toe. Not forgetting our left leg. Press it into the floor. Inhaling, now here we go. Exhale, draping ourselves over that leg now. Let's place both straps in our right hand. Sweeping, opening up towards each other. Smile. And ragdolling that left arm over the hip. Again, press the left leg down, left hip presses down. Just stretching out the whole ribs along our whole left side through here. And let's lift out and change sides. Strap goes over the ball of our right foot. Rotate, or excuse me, left foot. Let's square up our shoulders. Our right leg is active into the floor. Inhaling. And as we exhale, pulling our chest through. Again, hinging at our hip joint. Stay lifted for now. Inhale. And now exhale, draping over that leg. Feel free to extend the arms down. Breathe. Placing both straps into our left hand. As we sweep our right arm up facing each other, opening up the chest and ragdolling the arm over. Feeling that wonderful stretch. We can feel it from our ribs up, right up to the base of our armpit. Keeping the left leg active, the left hip stays down. Inhale, exhale as we lift out. And removing our straps. Good. Let's bring the legs together. Shake them out. Well, let's take our right foot. Elbow, or excuse me, <laughs> ankle above the knee. The foot is flexed. We're going to slide in that left foot. 
and we feel that delicious tension within our leg. I'm leaning back a little bit because I am very tight. My hands are underneath my shoulders. If you have the mobility, you can sit up tall and draw that foot in close. What works for you? For me, this is a wonderful stretch. Maybe you can sit up taller and draw in. Pick your best pose. Pick what makes you feel good. Let's embrace where we are. Just a little rock side to side. And now releasing. Let's extend our leg out, untangle it, and then changing sides. Again, foot is flexed to protect the knee. Feel free to start leaning back, hands under the shoulders. So we slide our leg in. Finding that right spot. And again, if you're here and you don't feel that sensation quite much, come in. Sit up tall. No right, no wrong, just different. Let's rock side to side. A little love for the hips today. Slide out, untangle those legs. Turning onto our mats. Hands behind our knees as we uncurl all the way down towards our mat. Coming into final relaxation. And shake out the legs. Maybe lift the hips, realign the shoulders and the spine. Coming into a comfortable position. As we bring focus to our breathing yet again, inhale fully, make the belly raise, and exhale, allowing the belly to fall. Let that breath become longer. Maybe count to four. A little pause, and exhale. Counting to four with a little pause. Let the heat of our breath build within our core. Let that softness build. That softness take over our facial muscles, our belly, our chest. With each exhalation, they become softer, relaxed. Let that softness with each exhalation radiate out through our arms and legs, our fingertips and our toes. Releasing all tension and allowing us to melt into the floor. Slowly wiggle your fingertips and your toes, making that movement a little bigger each time. Let's bring our hands together, our feet together, gently rubbing to create some warmth. 
And now shielding our eyes with our hand. Let's open our eyes. Drawing our knees together and bringing them in towards our chest. Cradle rocking side to side. Slowly allowing our knees to fall away from our chest. Feeling that rock change. And now draw in and release. And if you like rocking and rolling, using our core to brace at the top. And joining me in easy seated. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you back here again. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts. I would like to keep creating content that is something that would benefit you, that you would enjoy. So I appreciate any suggestions that I get. Thank you very much. We'll see you again.